This video is sponsored by the trading brokerage Moomoo. Use my link down below, deposit 100 bucks with Moomoo, and we each get five stocks. And each of those stocks, get this, guys, is valued up to 3500 bucks. So get your free money from Moomoo, link down below, and let's get right into the video. Let's go, baby. What's going on, everybody? Estas here. Welcome back to another video. So we have to break down the markets in this video, some earnings reports, stocks, what the markets are looking like in general. And let me tell you today was a crazy day intraday and after hours which we will break down what's going on after hours so if you guys find value hit the like button subscribe make sure to join my patreon if you guys want all my buy sells call outs morning update videos discord access plus more all of that's on patreon link down below and with that being said let's get right into the video so let's take a look at these markets guys we had spy go up 0.7 percent on the day today we had the Russell 2000 up over 1 point. Well, I guess exactly 1.1%. We had the NASDAQ up 0.6. And we had the Dow Jones up 0.8% as the VIX collapsed about 11 points. 0.5%. And let me show you guys this. Let me show you the intraday chart on SPY. Look at this. A nice slow uptrend throughout the day. We did kind of have a uh, resistance at about 450 up until power hour. But again, we were uptrending into that resistance. And then once power hour hit, this thing went ballistic. The last hour of the day, SPY went from 450 all the way up to about 453.30. And then after market hours, it almost almost hit $455 per share. And look, Triple Q, which tracks the NASDAQ 100. This started off the day at about 359. We slowly recovered from that point throughout the day. And then once power hour hit, this thing went from 362 all the way to 369. And now it's hovering right around 368, 50, 60 after mar uh, market hours as it is about 615 p.m. right now on the East Coast. So the markets today extended their rallies from the past couple of days. If you guys remember, on Friday we had a big green day on Triple Q and on SPY and the whole markets in general, right? The whole market. Uh, we had a green day Friday, yesterday, and that continued today. And you guys can see the breakout on the five-day chart is continuing. We have the 20-day chart breakout continuing but on the four hour chart guys not to burst your bubble we're looking great everything's nice in the short term here we're green all across the board but we're still approaching a key level of resistance right by roughly 375 380 on triple q which is right by this 180 moving average and when it comes to spy also right by the 180 moving average at about let's say 455 to 460 which just happens to be where we are right now on spy so in the short term this is looking great we've had three four days straight a bunch of gains you know we're making money on paper some of us are realizing these profits it's awesome but at some point we are going to see some weakness. And I do believe we're coming up on that in the next maybe day or two. You know, I don't think we're going to see another three green days in a row. I mean, it's possible we might, but overall, again, we're approaching a big resistance on the four hour chart, both on Triple Q and SPY. So keep that in mind. Don't ignore it. Don't lie to yourself. We are approaching resistance. And don't get it twisted, guys. If we break out of that resistance, it might be all, uh, you know, all clear blue skies from there, but we're not there quite yet. So keep that in mind. And as always, let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Make sure to smash the like button if you guys are finding value. As always, it really helps me out in the YouTube algorithm. And don't forget to get your five stocks from Moo Moo. That's linked down below. And now let's talk about the crazy, huge news that we got, which I don't know if you could tell, but I'm super freaking excited for. Let's talk about it. So the good news, ladies and gentlemen, pertains to Google, ticker symbol G-O-O-G. -O -O -G. Take a look at this, guys. This thing, I mean, look at the aftermarket hours. This is unbelievable. This stock today closed at 2757 bucks, roughly, and it went up 1.6% on the day. Pretty nice day for Google. And then aftermarket hours, 4, 410, 415 p.m., on the East Coast hit, they reported earnings, and we got some news, and this thing went from $2,750 all the way to over $3,000. 
a share, guys. Just like that, Google went from 2500 bucks a couple days ago, and now it's sitting at $3,000 a share, about $37 away from all-time high. So what ended up happening? Well, guys, get this. The board approved a 20-for-1 stock split, which is unbelievable considering Google well, well, it was a $2,700 stock. Now it's 3000 bucks. That means Google is going to go from $3,000 per share down to about 150 something like that, give or take. Depends on when this is going to go through, when it's going to happen and whatever. But let's say right now, if we take 3000 divided by 20, it's going to be 150 bucks. So that means Google is going to be $150 a share. And you may be asking yourself, Stas, does this mean that Google is way cheaper? No, it doesn't mean that. The truth is the valuation of Google is exactly the same as it was when, well, I mean, it still is 3000 a share, but the valuation from 3000 a share to 150 a share, it's going to be the same. It's essentially the same. All that's happening is the dollar value of your shares that you're going to be buying or that you already own, they're going to be a lot less, but there's going to be a lot more shares outstanding. So it's kind of a, a manipulation here of the share price, the shares outstanding, which in, in, in all actuality, like I said, it doesn't change the valuation, but it does change the dollar value of the stock. So this is very good news because it looks cheaper on paper. I mean, even though it's not cheaper, but the average Joe would see Google at 3000 They're going to be like, oh, it's expensive. Google at 150 Oh, it's not expensive. So more people are going to be able to get into Google, even though they could have before due to fractional shares. I mean, it's not, uh, it's not a time period where fractional shares aren't a thing. I mean, that's the beauty of investing in 2022. We have fractional shares, but again, to the eye, 3000 versus $150 a share, big, big difference. And one thing that I'm super excited about is the options market because I'm a big shareholder of Google. I've mentioned that before, but I didn't have 100 shares of Google when it was at well, it still is at 3000 You know, I don't have that much Google in my portfolio. I wish. That'd be awesome. But I don't have 100 shares of Google. But now after the split, I will have more than 100 shares of Google. So what that means is I will be able to, if I want, which I might not with Google. I'm still on the fence about this. Let's just say I might now consider, once this split goes through, selling covered calls against my Google position. I'm going to be careful, though, because I don't want to be assigned because Google is one of those stocks that I do not want to want to have to give up. To be honest, I don't want to give it up. So I might not even sell covered calls. I'm still on the fence about it. But cash secured puts will definitely uh, be selling those on Google all day to create some uh, income from premium. So that's the big news. That's the big news. They approved a 20 for one stock split. I'm super pumped about it. It's great. Uh, and, and at this point, we've seen NVIDIA do this. We've seen Tesla do it. And it seems like the stocks have ripped since the split. I mean, look at this. I remember when I was in Hawaii back in July, I was talking about NVIDIA, how they were going to have the split what's going to happen to the stock, and look what happened to the stock, guys. I mean, this thing was about 180 right around the split, and it went all the way to 340. So I'm not saying Google is going to double from here after the split, but to say, to say it can go up a couple, maybe 5, 10, 20% after the split, especially if the markets recover, that's not too unreasonable in my personal opinion. You know, it's very possible. Would I want it to go lower? Would I want it to dump? Yes, but it doesn't matter what I want, guys. Things might happen uh, that, that we don't really expect or that we don't necessarily want. And in this case, I would love Google to come down more so I can buy more, but it might just rip higher. And when it comes to their earnings, guys, earnings were great. EPS came in at $30.69 versus $27.48 estimated, so they crushed EPS. We had revenue at $75.33 billion versus is 72.13 billion so they crushed EPS they crushed revenue sales rose over 32% year over year which is just unbelievable i mean this is a company that is massive it's growing a lot the pe was reasonable before this earnings report heck it might still be reasonable 
after the earnings report as the stock is up 7-8% after market hours. And if we take a look here at the different segments, we had YouTube ads revenue of $8.63 billion. We had services revenue of almost $70 billion. We had search and other revenue of $43.3 billion. Advertising revenue of $61.24 billion. So they're making a crap ton of money. And their YouTube ads revenue, the YouTube business, is what I really do believe longer term is going to be a growth beast. I mean, just their YouTube ad revenue being around $8 billion for the quarter, guys. That's more than AMD made in a quarter as a business. That's more than Starbucks made. I'm looking at their numbers. We'll talk about them in a second, AMD and Starbucks. But I'm telling you, just their YouTube ads business, to give you guys perspective, made more money than PayPal too. I mean, PayPal made 6.9 this quarter, past quarter. YouTube's over $8 billion. They made more than Starbucks. They made more than AMD. They made more. They made four times more than what EA made in terms of revenue. So this is a huge business. I think it's going to continue to grow. And that is why I'm very excited about Google long term, flat out. And at this point, I don't know what's going to happen. I think it could go either way. We might rip to all-time highs tomorrow. We might run for the next couple of days, then see a cool-off period before the split. I have no idea, but let me tell you, I'm in for the ride, and I'm super pumped about it. So what do you guys think about Google? Drop me a comment. Make sure to smash that like button if you haven't done so already. So that was a great earnings report, but the next one was not. This stock is getting demolished, guys. I don't even know what to say anymore. This stock is PayPal. They reported EPS of $1.11 versus $1.12 estimated, so they barely missed EPS. They missed by a penny, literally. I mean, they barely missed. And revenue came in at $6.9 billion versus $6.86 billion estimated, so they beat revenue. They missed EPS, and Q4 total payment volume came in under the estimate, which that can't be helping the stock. I mean, look, the stock is down 30 Thirty dollars. This is not good. I mean, the stock closed at one seventy-five. Now it's trading at one forty-five after market hours. And I mean, I mean, being a PayPal shareholder has been rough. This thing is down eighteen percent after market hours, and it's down over fifty percent over the past couple of months. I mean, it was three hundred twelve bucks back in July. Now it's at one forty-five. It is down fifty-three. This is why diversification is key. Could you imagine if you had a three to four stock portfolio? Let's say you had PayPal. Let's say you had Square, maybe Alibaba. And let's say you had, I don't know. I mean, let's say you had a good one or, or a good or well-performing one like Google. You are still going to be down massively, you know, because PayPal and the other ones are down a ton while Google's up, uh, up a lot. You know, you're still going to be down a lot. So for me, I... I think having diversification, if you want an all single stock portfolio, in my opinion, you got to have at least 10, 12, maybe 15 more or, or more stocks. Nothing more than 20, though, I think. I think 15 to 20 is the sweet spot. Maybe 12, 15 is the sweet spot. And it depends. You know, maybe you want a more concentrated portfolio. But for me, I would not want three or four stocks in my portfolio due to things like this. PayPal being down 50%. Baba being down a lot more. You know, a lot of stocks are getting crushed, guys. That's why diversification, again, I can't say it enough, it is key. And I'm not sure if we got anything on guidance on PayPal, for PayPal, let me see here. Yeah, I'm not really seeing anything uh, anything on guidance, and I, and I didn't see anything on guidance for Google either, unless I missed it. It seems like companies are not, some, some at least, some companies are not giving out guidance. That's interesting. Let's see what Starbucks is doing. This thing, wow, Starbucks went down to about 93 bucks. It closed at 90, almost 99 on the day, but it went down to 93 after hours after they reported earnings. So let me see here. Holy crap, this thing's volatile. So it closed at 99, went down to 93. I'm assuming the earnings call began. Now it's up over 98 again and hit over 100. So this thing has been super volatile. They did EPS. They missed EPS, by the way, guys. 72 cents 
versus 80 cents estimated. So they missed there by eight cents. And revenue came in at 8.1 billion. Again, YouTube ad revenue is bigger than Starbucks's revenue for the quarter, which is nuts. They did 8.1 billion versus 7.97 billion estimated. So they missed EPS. They beat revenue. And we got Q1 comparable store sales, which in my opinion, this is a pretty good number, up 13% globally versus the 12% estimated. So that beat Q1 comparable store sales beat, which is nice. And this is what I look for when I'm looking at businesses like restaurants. Um, what else? I mean, a lot, a lot of businesses, you know, retail, you want to see the same store sales up. You want to see that number going up comparable store sales. If it's going down, that's not good. But if it's growing, that is good, especially if it's growing more than the estimate. So at this point, I'm keeping my eyes on Starbucks. Maybe it does end up making a move back over 100 in the short term. Maybe it goes to 105, 110, right by that 180 moving average on the four-hour chart. That is where it could be heading in the short term. Nothing's guaranteed as always, guys. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not for sure positive. Anything's going to happen because nobody knows what's going to happen. But uh, it seems like the stock's gaining some steam now, so let's see. I'm going to put my alert at $100 per share. Mark is at or above $100. we will see what it does from there. Now, let's take a look at AMD. Somebody messaged me on Patreon earlier today asking me about uh, AMD. Should I buy on earnings? Should I wait? Whatever. And for me personally, guys, I've said this before. I've been open about it. I'm not the type that likes to buy shares right before earnings just to gamble on earnings or buy call options or put options. You know, I used to do that sometimes back in the day when I first started trading, but not anymore. I've learned my lesson. I've gotten toasted in the past. Let me tell you, I've lost a lot of money doing that in the past. I've made some money as well, but Net, net, I think I lost more than I made. Probably did, right? It's a losing strategy, in my opinion, unless you're very picky. But then again, it's still a gamble. And somebody was asking me about it, and they had shares going into the earnings. And I told them exactly what I just said, but it seems like they made, uh, made out like a bandit because AMD is currently up about $12 after market hours. It closed at 116. It went up 2% on the day. Now it's sitting at 120, almost $129 a share. They did 92 cents of EPS, so they're profitable again versus the 76 cents estimated. So they crushed EPS and they crushed revenue, $4.83 billion versus 4.52 billion estimated. So nice double beat for AMD. And if I pull up the live news tab, do we have anything on earnings? Holy crap, guys. That's what is moving the needle. That's what's moving the stock. Look at this. They see full year 2022 sales. <laughs> this is nuts. About 21.5 billion, roughly 21.5 billion. That's what they're expecting as a company. The analysts were looking at about 19.27. So guidance for sales is way higher than the estimate for 2022. And they see sales, um, let's see here, for the next quarter of about 4.9 to 5.1 billion versus 4.32. So what do I always say, guys? It's great to see a double beat for the previous quarter, but what's even better is awesome guidance, and AMD gave awesome guidance for the quarter. The stock's ripping. It's above the 50 moving average on this four-hour chart. It's about to test the 180, which if it does break out of there, let's say it breaks into the 130s, this one could really be off to the races. So I'm putting my alert right now at 130 bucks for AMD, and we'll watch what it does from there. So let me know your thoughts on AMD. Now let's go to the last stock for this video, which is Electronic Arts, ticker symbol EA. And this has been a dog stock, guys, a dog stock. Let me tell you, this thing has not been doing much over the past year. In fact, it's down on the past year. And over the past three years, it really hasn't been doing much. I mean, if you bought this stock back in February of 2019, let's say at the peak of $110, that was three years ago, you would be up about 18 bucks a share in three years which is roughly a percentage gain, let's see here, a percentage gain of around 
18 percent 18 divided by three that's six percent a year so you'd be up roughly six percent a year not including inflation if you bought in 2019 so that's not that great of a return which again is why i'm thinking and i've been saying ea is a dog stock and they reported earnings that were not that great the stock ended up tanking initially we closed at about 130 we went down to 120 after hours now we've recovered a little bit but we're still down so they did EPS, Q3 EPS of 23 cents. I'm not sure what the estimate was. I didn't find it here on the live news tab, but they did revenue of $1.79 billion. So those numbers, probably not the best. And we do see um, guidance is in. I'm not sure what the estimates are for the guidance, but they do see Q4 EPS of $0.46, cents, so they are supposed to be more profitable than the quarter they just reported for next quarter. And they see revenue of about $1.76 billion, which is less than what they just reported. So not too bad, I would say, of earnings, but not great either. I would say kind of disappointing from EA. And overall, guys, I'm not going to touch this stock until it starts getting over 130 to 135. At that point, maybe it starts gaining momentum. Uh, but then again, 140 is a big resistance. So this one, I'm just going to keep it on the watch list and see what it does in the meantime. So overall, that's it. That's it. What a freaking day. I mean, I don't know what else to say, guys. <laughs> what a day. The stock market never ceases to amaze me. So if you all found value, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, drop me a comment, let me know your thoughts, and don't forget to join my Patreon if you want all my real-time buys, sales, call-outs, morning update videos, plus more. All of that's on Patreon, link down below, or you guys can go to StossurFest.com slash Patreon. That's StossurFest.com slash Patreon. Make sure to check it out. Today's the best day to join, guys. It's the beginning of the month. Best time to try it out. Again, link down below. Make sure to also get your five stops for Moomoo. All you have to do is use my link, deposit $100, and you guys get up to five stocks, each of which are valued up to 3500 bucks. Make sure to use that link down below, deposit $100. bucks. i will catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. As always, keep crushing the market. Stay safe out there. Peace out.